everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics by N. Gregory Mankiw. We work with the sixth edition here, and we're going to be doing chapter seven, problem number one. This problem is about consumer surplus and willingness to pay, but unlike the usual case where we're given willingness to pay and asked to compute consumer surplus, this question asks us to work backwards a little bit. So it says, Melissa buys an iPod for $120 and gets consumer surplus of $80. And then part A of the question asks, what is her willingness to pay? So we know that for any given unit of a transaction, the consumer surplus generated by that particular transaction unit is the difference between the maximum that the consumer would have paid, namely their willingness to pay, and the actual price that they pay. So we could say the consumer surplus for a particular unit, just call it consumer surplus, is equal to willingness to pay minus the actual price paid. And usually this is gonna be some P star because prices are usually determined by supply and demand equilibrium. And if we're at that equilibrium price, then it's gonna be P star here. So we can plug in what we know and then just solve for what we don't know. So again, it says, Melissa buys an iPod for $120. So it must be the case that this price is $120. So it's, and she gets consumer surplus of $80. So it must be the case that this guy here is $80. And then the willingness to pay is what the question is asking for. So we can just do some simple algebra here and say, well, if this is what we want to solve for, we can just add 120 to both sides and solve for this. And we just get that this question mark or our willingness to pay is equal to $80 plus $120 or namely $200. Part B of the question asks, if she had bought the iPod on sale for $90, what would her consumer surplus have been? So again, we can just plug in what we know here. Well, now that we know that her willingness to pay is $200, or equivalently, that she values this particular iPod at $200, we can then plug it into the formula here and calculate her new consumer surplus. And here, this time, we can just use the formula going forward. And we can say consumer surplus is her willingness to pay of $200 minus now the sale price of $90. And this leaves Melissa with $110 of consumer surplus. And this is consistent with the observation that consumer surplus goes up when prices go down and vice versa. Not surprisingly, because if we're assuming that the consumer is economically rational, they're not forming their personal valuation of the item based on how much they know the market price is. So this valuation isn't gonna change based on what this price is. So obviously as this goes down, consumer surplus goes up, and as this goes up, consumer surplus goes down. The last part of the question says, if the price of an iPod were $250, what would her consumer surplus have been? And it's really tempting to just blindly push ahead with these formulas and say, okay, fine, consumer surplus is willingness to pay, which is still $200. Now we were told that the price is $250. Okay, we gotta subtract, and we're left with negative $50 of surplus but wait, so that doesn't seem right. So let's think about this. If this consumer valued the item at $200 and the market price of the item were $250, she just wouldn't be purchasing the item. And if she's not purchasing the item, then by definition, her surplus from that transaction, since the transaction's not happening, is zero. So be careful here that you can't just apply the same formula and say, oh, we just get a negative surplus because what actually is happening is the consumer is choosing not to engage in this transaction and getting a surplus of zero instead.
And in general, we can say that because the vast majority of economic transactions are voluntary, we can say when economic transactions are voluntary, by definition, consumer and producer must both be getting non-negative surplus from those transactions. So really the only way that somebody could be getting a negative surplus from an economic transaction is if someone were holding a gun to their head and forcing them to engage in an economic transaction that they didn't feel was actually in their best interests.